Greetings, everybody. Welcome to another uh, Yoga Sutra discussion. We're currently discussing Kaivalya Pada, the fourth chapter of Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, and we're up to uh, Sutra 412, which is a Sutra on the magic of the moment, magic of the moment. We'll go through the opening chanting together and Yoga Sutra chanting will we'll do some repetition like we've been doing the last few weeks. Om Shri Gurave Namaha Om Shri Ganeshaya Namaha Om Shri Saraswatiye Namaha Om Vande Guru Nam Charanaravinde Sandarshita Swatma Sukhava Bodhe Nishreya Se Jangari Kayamane Samsara Hala Hala Moha Shantye Abahu Purusha Karam Shankachakrasi Tarinam Sahasra Shirasam Shwetam Pranamami Patanjalim Yogena Chittasya Padena Vacham Malam Sharirasya Chavaidyakena Yopakarottam Bravaram Muninam Patanjalim Branjali Ranatusmi Aum Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya Aum Shanti 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 Aum Sahana Babatu Sahana Bunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejasvi Navadhi Tamastu Mavitvishavahai Aum Shanti 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 Aum Namo Brahma Vidyo Brahma Vidya Sambradaya Kartribyo Namo Vamsharashibyo Namo Mahadbyo Namo Gurubhyaha Sarvo Paplavarahita Pragnana Gana Pratigartho Brahmaiva Masmi Aum Tat Aum Paramatmane Namaha Shri Patanjara Yoga Darshanam Atta Kaivalya Padaha Janma Oshati Mantra Tapas Samadhi Jaha Siddhayaha Janna Oshati Mantra Tapas Samadhi Jaha Siddhayaha Jati Antara Parinamaha Prakriti Apurat Jatyantara Parinama Prakriti Apurat Namittam Aprayojakam Prakriti Nam Varana Bedaha Tu Tatas Shetrikavata Namittam aprayojakam prakriti nam varana bedas tu tatak shetrikavata. Nirmana chitani asmita matrat. Nirmana chitani 
अन्यस्मता प्रवृत्ति भेदे प्रयोजक चिंतक प्रवृत्ति भेदे प्रयोजक चिंतक ध्यान जमनाशय काम अशुक्ल अकृष्ण योगिनिधम इतरेशुक्लाकृष्ण योगिनिधम इतरेशत तत्पाक अगुणा अभिव्यक्ति वासना ततस्तुणाभिव्यक्तिर्वासना जाति देश काल व्यवहिता आनंदार्य स्मृति संस्कार एक जाति देश काल व्यवहिता आनंदार्य स्मृति संस्कार आशिषः निशिषो निेतु फल आश्रय आलंबन संगृहीतवाश्रयालंबन संगृहीतवादीत अनागत स्वूप अस्ति अद्वेदातीतागत स्वूपस्तवेदा ते व्यक्त सूक्ष्मा गुण आत्मा ते व्यक्त सूक्ष्म गुणात्मा परिणामा एक वस्तु तत्व परिणाम एक वस्तु तत्व वस्तु साम्ये चित भेदात विभक्त पंथा वस्तु साम्ये चित्त भेदात विभक्त पंथा न एक चित्त तंत्र चेत वस्तु तत्प्रमाणक तदाकिंस्यात्र चेत वस्तु तरप्रमाणक तदाकिंस्यापराग अपेक्षित चित वस्तु ज्ञात सदा 
ज्ञाता चित्त वृत्तय तत् प्रभो पुषस्य परिणा सदा ज्ञातावृत्तस्तत्भो पुषस् परिणा न स्व आभास दृश्य न तत्स्वास दृश्य एक उभय अनवधारणम एक चोभयानवधारणम चित्त अंतर दृश्य बुद्धि बुद्धे अति प्रसंग स्मृति संकर चितादृश्य बुद्धि बुद्धेति प्रसंग स्मृति संकर up to 21 is completes a section and the new new subject begins so we're going to go through and recite the second line where all the sandhi all the words are joined together all the sandhi is completed together just the second black line atakai va ya pada ha जन्मषधि मंत्र तपस्तर परिणाम प्रकृतियाजक प्रकृतीर्ण भेद क्षेत्रिकवत् निमित्तमयोजक प्रकृतीना वर्ण भेद क्षेत्रिकवत् निर्माण चित्ता प्रवृत्तिदे प्रयोजक चिमेकमने के त्रन जमनाशय कर्मा शुक्मा कृष्ण योगिन स्त्रिधमितरेशा ततस्तुणाभ्यक्तिर्वासना जातिदेश काल व्यवहिताता स्मृति संस्कारोक चाशिशो निपलाश्रयालंबनाय संगृहतवादेशम भाव तद भाव अतीतागत स्वूपस्तभेदा हे व्यक्त सूक्ष्मा गुणात्मा परिणाकस्तुत वस्तु साम्ये चिभेदर्भक्त पंथा न चाइक चिंत्र चेदस्तुतर प्रमाणक तरुपरागा चिस्तु ज्ञाता सदा ज्ञातावृत्तस्तत्भो पुषस्याणा न तत्स्वास दृश्य एक चोभयानवधारणम चिंतादृश्य बुद्धि बुद्धेति प्रसंग स्मृति संकर ओम 
Poor Namada, poor Namidam, poor Nat, poor Namudachate, poor Nasya, poor Namadaya, poor Nameva Vashishate, Om Nanti Shanti Shanti. So last week we did a few sutras. Um, one of the important things we went that we talked about last week is uh, if the ignorance is gone, then if above, if it's disappeared, the ignorance, right? So I, I translated it like if from wisdom, right? The cause of our bondage is gone. Above, that's the ignorance, the cause of our bondage, right? From wisdom. And then, uh, then all the baggage that comes along with the ignorance is also gone. That's similar to the concept that was presented two sutras back, four, nine. If, if the memory is awakened because the quality of a situation or the, the location, something about the situation reminds you of a memory, right? That's how memories get awakened, right? There's something similar that reminds you about something that happened before. And so there's a similarity in either the quality of the situation, the location has a familiar quality to it, uh, the timing, uh, right? even though it, it's uh, hidden, right? It might be distant, doesn't matter if it's distant or a recent memory that memory is awakened and then the samskara that correlates to it also is gone, right? So if, if when the ignorance is gone, right, then, then this, this doesn't happen. And we've all experienced this actually, even though maybe we're not, uh, we don't call ourselves enlightened. We don't walk around and say we're enlightened, but um here this one uh but like the classic example is is you see it like a figure in the dark in poor lighting you think it's a snake <gasps> oh my god and you you run right but if you had a flashlight or somebody turned on the light in the room and you see that it's actually a stick or a rope or a hose, the garden hose, you know, that your kid left screwing out in the lawn. It's not a, it's not a boa constrictor after all, it's just a garden snake. <laughs> and what happens to all that fear? Poof, right? It's gone. Uh, if you got a lot of fear and there's some adrenaline, there'll be a lingering effect from the adrenaline in your system maybe, but, but the fear the, that was caused by the misconception, the wrong understanding of reality. And that's what a vidya is. It's a wrong understanding of reality. You see the figure and you, you think it's something that it's not. And you have a re response to it. And so that samskara, that response disappears when the light turns on. Yeah. Can it happen between two people too? There's a misunderstanding. That ever happened? No, you guys are so good. <laughs> so, I mean, usually, you know, you get really upset, you get worked up over something that you think happened that they did your kid, your your friend, your boss, your spouse, whoever it is, your boyfriend, girlfriend. And, but then if, uh, right, while you worked up, you won't even, they maybe they're trying to explain themselves because they're, they're actually innocent. But if you're worked up, you can't even listen to them reasonably. For the ignorance, the some scars that are um, controlling or in, impelling you to behave a certain way. 
Uh, but if somebody comes along and manages to calm me down a little bit and explain to you what happens, then uh, what had happened that the person you thought had done such and such a thing, such a horrible thing, right? They left their dishes on that counter and they didn't put them away. <laughs> such a horrible thing to get afflicted by. Uh, but once you, you realize then you're, you're not upset at the anymore, at your, your loved one. Of course, we are easier to get upset at our loved ones because the proximity, the intimacy, right? We, we expose our true, all our, our weaknesses come out. When we're around people we don't know, we don't care enough generally to uh, let it all hang out. So this, uh, is this the one? Yeah, this is the one, right? So, so that's uh, what this concept, right? And with, in terms of enlightenment, this concept of when your misconception vanishes because somebody turns the light on or somebody explains it to you and you finally get it, ah, right? Then all of a sudden the confusion or the behavior the, neg the affliction, the negative patterns that you were um, being compelled by, those also disappear. True or not true? So it's not really a very necessarily a mystical concept. It's, it's also very uh, ordinary. And in the case of becoming enlightened, well, that's uh, just another extreme version of the same thing. What do I know about enlightenment? Very little, very little actually. So, but so, so I'm told, <laughs> but we all, ha we have the, the aha moments, right? And we get little awakenings where we see the, the way it works and like, ah, okay. And then it's, uh, there's a release inside of us when we have that aha, ah, now I understand, right? It's not always about like, you know, being afflicted uh, and upset. Sometimes we're just like, we're struggling to try to figure something out. And that, that struggle is a little bit of a, you know, of a strain, right? And when we relax and we allow the mind to uh, be comfortable and not knowing then a lot of times that creates the opening for the insight, right? The solution to percolate up into your consciousness from who knows where it comes from, but it appears into your consciousness when the mind is able to hold the situation, the problem that you're trying to solve uh, in the right way, holding it, but not grasping it. But then the mind has a softness to it and a malleability to it that allows you to see things uh, that you weren't able to see before when you were gripping, trying, wanting too much to, to see the solution. And then we started this sutra 412, Atita Anagatam Swarupataha Asti Adva Bedat Dharmanam. Um, right, and, and basically, this sutra we're talking about that we're we're sandwiched. We're 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 always finding ourselves whenever we're present that we're in between where we just came from and where we're headed. We're caught in the moment. This moment, which is. Uh, not static, but is, is alive, like a, a flame. We think of it as a, a thing, a static thing, a flame, right? But a flame is actually carbon and oxygen constantly um, uh, fusing together, joint bonding together, bonding together, carbon and oxygen. It's a process, 
A flame is not a thing. A flame is a process. When you look at a flame, you're looking at something that's undergoing uh, immensely rapid uh, process of, of um, binding, chemical binding, molecular binding. So the, the moment is, is just like that. One second. Sorry. See if this is important. Okay. Uh, clear? So what's the significance of this? Why is Patanjali pointing this out to us? Sunny? Why is this worth mentioning? Any ideas, anybody? If it's not worth mentioning, it wouldn't be in the sutra. So what is it that's so worthwhile that it's put into the sutra because it's kind of just like yeah of course we're in the moment and the moment is unfolding christina when you're not in the moment that's that's a cause of suffering you're uh-huh you're yes lying in the past or the future but you're not present in the moment yeah so so in what way is the mind suffering you're not in touch with reality. You're creating your own imagination or memories. So sounds, you're sounds so okay. You're, <laughs> I can day, can't I daydream? <laughs> can't so I reminisce and enjoy? Oh, that was so neat when that happened, and oh, I wish that could happen again. And like, yeah. So so that's definitely true. And there's there's one other thing, maybe. Uh, anybody else have any other ideas? So what might you miss if you're, if you're experiencing your imagination rather than, I mean, your imagination is actually, you're in the present moment in your imagination, aren't you? You're missing what's happening right now. You're not seeing the whole picture. Exactly. Yeah. So and what's significant about that is that then, um, right, so a lot of times, have you ever noticed, have you ever seen like there was an opportunity, but, but be, by the time you realized there was an opportunity, it's already, that window of opportunity has already been closed and passed? And so there's all, you know, there's always a, a variety of different choices we can be making every moment. And, and the universe is presenting us with different options at every moment. And if we're, if we're not present, then we don't, we don't cap, we don't, we have to be alert, right? To, to notice, to capture the moment to seize the opportunities that might be present for us to, to what? To move ourselves in the direction we want to be going. Right, so somebody, somebody who's very, whose attention is very stable. Right? Or how about this? Have you, have you ever met anybody who can get a lot done in a short amount of time? Like at, at the office, they can just get through a bunch of work or at home chores, right? So and what is it that, what's the quality that they have that enables them to be able to do that? to have that kind of efficiency, there's a certain quality that they have. What is that? Alexis, you're nodding your head. You nodded your head, you said, especially when I said how chores around the house. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> she's, I oh. 
Morally distracted now. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> oh. Yeah. You're going to give us an idea? No. Okay. Tony? You want to make a guess or give us your wisdom? If the mind is, is not, if the mind is scattered, it's not thinking about what's present, right? It's not, that means we're not focused. That means we don't have good concentration, right? Concentration is, is, means there's stability in your attention. And this stability is what enables you to stay present in the moment. If you don't have stability, you can't stay present on what's happening. Your mind focuses on what's happening. And then again, it's thinking it's in its imagination again. And you go, ah, oh, and you have to bring it back, right? That's what we do in our yoga practice, right? The mind is, you're trying to keep the mind yoked to what you're doing, trying to connect it, link it to what you're doing, but it, it keeps deviating. I mean, not maybe not for, for everybody, but most people, 99% of everybody, we, that's, that's our struggle, to keep the mind focused on what we're doing uh, and not to think about uh, your to-do list, not to think about um, the nice things you wanna do for your, your um, boyfriend uh, or your husband or your dog. Um, or your cats uh, after yoga practice or whatever it is that you, you're thinking about your breathing, you're thinking about the asana and the subtleties of sensations in your body and how to operate them. Uh, so when the mind is focused, then you're more efficient. So that person who is very efficient in the tasks, the responsibilities that they want to accomplish or if they have a goal, right? Accomplishing responsibilities is a, is a kind of goal, right? Uh, getting work done at your desk at the office and getting through your, your task list or the chores that you have at home, right? The, the more stable your attention is, the more efficient you're gonna see that your ability to accomplish all those things will be. It will take less time. Now, on the yoga mat, when if the mind you know, you have to always fix your hair or adjust your mat or check to see what, what your friend is, what asana your friend is doing. Uh, uh, you don't get as much done. And this means, you know, in life, our time and our energy is really like the main asset that we can claim as our, that's real that we have, our time and energy and how we use our time and energy. If we want to be successful, successful people are efficient, more efficient with their time and energy, generally. If you want to end up somewhere on purpose, you're gonna be more successful at getting yourself there if you're more attentive to the present, what's happening, not just in your imagination, but what's happening actually outside of you and your relationship to what's going on in the world. So this is one of the three sutras with the verb. And I haven't really given a lot of time to uh, what the significance of the verbs is uh, beyond just the fact that the sutra must be have hold some significance for potentially to use a verb. The other one is 416. So two of them are in the fourth chapter. And the third one is 252 in the th second chapter, 52 on, on how pranayama purifies the ignorance and, uh, from your heart, from the ignorance that covers your, your spiritual self. Right, that light that shines and illuminates. So you see things for what they are without the baggage. 
So pranayama helps remove the baggage that clouds and distorts your conception of things. Hmm? Okay. Sutra 13. Te Vyakta Sukshmaha Guna Atmanaha Te Vyakta Sukshmaha Guna Atmanaha Te Vyakta Sukshma Guna Atmanaha Te Vyakta Sukshma Gunatmanaha. So, <clears throat> all things, things in the past, the present, the future, whether they're in a subtle, late, uh, latent uh, state or if they're manifested, uh, they're all, everything is a combination of the gunas, different combination of the gunas, the sattva, rajas, and tamas the quality of luminosity or ripeness, uh, activity uh, or heaviness. So weird, what is he talking about? <laughs> you really have to think about these things. <laughs> Why is he saying this? So first you have to figure out the words and how to make kind of some gross sense of the sutra. And then you need to think like, well, why is he saying this? Uh, what's, what's the point to read between the lines? Okay. So those potentials, uh, sorry, te, te is a, is a form of tut. Tut means that. Uh, te is plural. Those potentials. Right, from from the past to the present and heading into the future. All right, all the things that have happened that brought you to the condition, the state where you're in right now, and the, the things you're doing right now, choosing which path forward you're you're headed down at every moment. New path, new path, new path every moment like the fire, the flame. It's a new flame, new flame, new flame, new flame, new flame, new flame. Every moment, new flame, new flame. Uh, so those potentials, right? vyakta means manifested. Vyakta, whether they're manifested or sukshma. Sukshma means subtle, right? Or in other words, uh, latent not yet manifested potentials. These are all guna. The guna, guna uh, we have to talk about what guna is. Uh, the qualities, the different qualities. Um, Atman, the, the nature, the essential nature, Atman. So here we're not talking about our soul. Often we're talking about the nature of, of things. All things are composed of the gunas. Right? In other words, what does that mean? All things are composed of the gunas. It means that everything has qualities to it. Right? This has quality to it. If I turn it on and I turn the screen up bright, right, right now the screen is dark. So the screen is dull. If I turn it on and I turn the brightness up, the quality changed, right? Your mind has a quality to it. Your body has a quality to it. The food you eat has a quality to it. If it's uplifting or if it's um, dulling or if it's agitating, 
these are the qualities that everything has. So and that's that's the guna. Uplifting would be sattva, right? Sattva, luminous or ripe. It's uplifting. You want to be ripe means you're at your peak. You're at your best. Uh, stimulating or or agitating. Rajas, rajas. Let me turn the page. I think there's maybe a, a little diagram. Yep. So what are the gunas and how they function? Uh, we had a sutra in 2.18, uh, just, just for a little uh, weave together, a little dovetail. And Patanjali, he didn't use the word guna like he's using now. He used the words that describe the qualities of the gunas. So rather than saying, you know, I have a box of three crayons, he said, there's blueness, there's yellowness, and there's redness. So, prakasha, kriya, stiti, shilam. There you go. Better? I couldn't even see it, it's so small. So prakasha, kriya, stiti, shilam. Shilam just means quality. Prakasha is the sattva quality, and it's luminous, it's brilliant. It's the ripeness. With a, I mean, it's the peak of ripeness. Rajas is kriya, prakasha, kriya. So kriya, kriya means doing stuff. So it's active, it's the rajas quality the Rajas Guna. When things are developing, when the peach is green, it's not at its peak. So it's, it's, it's in motion, it's, it's developing, right? It's ripening. So that's, that activity is Rajas Guna, the Rajas Guna. You're working hard in your yoga practice. That's a Rajas active. When there, if there's no rajas active in your system, it's going to be really hard to get yourself moving in your yoga practice. If you have more rajas, then you need some boundaries to contain and channel that energy so that energy is constructive rather than destructive. So if rajas is governed by uh, tamas, which is a dull kind of energy, more of an inert energy, then, then the rajas is gonna be destructive because it has no guidance or it's seeking things that are uh, gonna create dullness like a, like a drug addict. There's a lot of rajas in the drug addict or the robber. The robber has a lot of ambition, right? But he's governed by tamas. And so he uses that ambitious energy in, in a harmful way. The drug addict and the robber, they're both uh, people. That they have like the craving is the rajas the, and the energy they put forth to get the, their fix but the fix is detrimental to them, right? If the rajas, you have a lot of rajas, act, active energy in you, and it's governed by sattva, then, then you, you're, you're putting it to use, constructive use, to you, that's gonna help elevate you or help you obtain a health, healthier goals. And so tamas is gonna lead you towards less healthy goals, sattva is gonna take the energy of rajas and it's gonna move it towards healthier goals. So it's important that the rajas has some guidance. If you have not very much rajas and a lot of sattva, then you're like the person who's just sit, likes to sit in meditation. 
sit in bliss right? and they don't they have they don't see the point of having ambition because what do you need to do anything for i'm like so happy just sitting here <laughs> what's wrong you guys why are you guys so agitated running around doing stuff all the time <laughs> calm down sit down <laughs> enjoy so that's if sattva is more dominant then you're just happy, pleasant. If Thomas is dominant, then you're like the guy comes home from work and he just sits on the couch and he doesn't lift a finger to help out. <laughs> Drinks his beer and watches Fox News. <laughs> Eats popcorn. Doesn't get up until it's bedtime. Or maybe he falls asleep on the couch. He doesn't even get up. Now it's Thomas, right? No. No rajas, no activity, just sits there, becomes heavier and heavier and heavier until he passes out. Give me another beer. <laughs> uh, or maybe you can't get up out of bed. Maybe you get depressed and lose your appetite. You don't have any appetite because there's too much tummus, so there's no interest. You need a little rudges to wake up your appetite. And so sometimes people, oh, I'm not interested in food. I've transcended food. Uh, yeah, I don't want to go out of the house. I'm just going to stay in bed. Uh, sounds like maybe it might be depression and not actually gone beyond food, but there's because of the depression and no rajas, there's no appetite. No interest in the food because interest, being interested in things, is a, a function of the rajas energy. Right, the sattva person, no rajas, not much ambition. Right, appetite is a kind of ambition. You want to eat? Give me more food. Yum! I could eat a whole house. And we have a uh, different ways the gunas can connect conceptually, theoretically with each other. There's a cyclical pattern to the gunas. Or once something's peaked, it can't, it can't get any better. It's at its best. So the only thing left for it to do is to go downhill and become heavy, rot, begin to uh, lose its brilliance, like the peach. After it peaks out, if you don't eat it, and it sits there on the counter for three more days, you come back. <laughs> it's definitely not as appetizing as it was when it was peak ripeness, right? It's gone tummus, it's gone uh, heavy and yucky on you. Um, if that seed gets an opportunity to start growing, right, then the cycle starts repeating again. It starts redeveloping until it peaks out again and then goes around and around and around and around and around and around and around, and around. ad infinitum. <laughs> so in the second chapter, it, it says uh, the gunas are always at odds with each other like they argue they don't they don't stay one this, whichever one is dominant will not stay dominant it, they're always revolving you can have a linear relationship between rajas and tamas right active and sed sedated that's a polarity right and then sattva would be the harmonizer between the two opposites the level of harmony between tamas and rajas can be viewed as sattva. Because you're going to have some tamas. You're always going to have three gunas. If you get it in imbalance, right, then it's like sat you have sattva. Sattva is when, when they come to balance. We can also have, in th this one, the transcendent version is particularly uh, 
important to understand for us as yogis. Um, if you, you might recall that Patanjali used the word sattva to refer to the higher mind, right? The mind, that part of the mind which functions more like spirit functions. That part of the mind that, that sees clearly. Uh, whether it's full of clouds or not is a different story. The sky is always the sky. Whether there's pollution or clouds in the sky is different, right? But if the, the sky is always the sky though. So th this is like when the mind being like sattva. Um, so the rajas and the tamas are the pollutants that create the, the murkiness the appearance of murkiness in, in the mind or in the sattva quality. But the sattva quality can elevate itself, separate itself. Uh, it's like having a higher perspective. When you become more objective, you start to feel like you're looking down at things. You're seeing the picture from a higher perspective, um, from the hot air balloon or from the top of the mountain. And the things happening down in the city when you're up on top of the mountain and you look back down at the city, it's so peaceful, right? This is sattva being lifted up above the rajas and the tamas. So much rajas and tamas going on down in the city, huh? It's so much like rah, 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 and activity, rah, 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 and people, you know, fending, you know, the f survival of the fittest, trying to get ahead and all this uh, stuff going on. And you go up, you drive up to the mountain, and you hike up to the mount, the peak, and you relax, and you look back down, and the city looks so much nicer from up above, from a distance, not affected by it. How do I get us back? Let's see. Hold on. Not like that, like that. There we go. Um, so er, early on in the fourth chapter, there is discussion about whatever things we develop, whatever abilities we cultivate, whatever you know way we choose whoever we choose to become, whoever we choose to pursue ourselves as being, you know, a good mother, a good you know, business person, uh, a good yoga teacher, you know, what any of these different things that we learn, cooking, so many things, linguist, uh, all these things, we're only able to become them because there are potentials within us. You can't become something that's not already inherently inside of you. Like uh, apple seed has the potential to become so many different things. Milk has the potential to become many different things. So look at the apple seed for a moment. Uh, if the apple, you know, gets crushed, falls on the ground and gets crushed, it, many of its potentials become, don't get a chance to manifest. But if you give the right conditions to the apple seed, you put it in the garden at the right time of year and you give it water at the right time and it can start to grow. If it gets the chance to grow up and become a, apple tree and produce more apples, right? Not only does it have that potential, it can produce more apples, but there's a lot of other things it could do. Things that may seem like uh, very uh, not so connected to an apple, the apple seed, but actually uh, a piece of furniture could have come from an apple seed. 
Whoa. Right? After the tree becomes big enough, old enough, you have a lot of wood that could potentially be harvested, not just the apples, to make apple pie or apple cider or apple cider vinegar, right? That from that apple seed, all those things came from that apple seed, but also the wood, the leaves that fall and turn into mulch. They all started from being an apple seed. So all these potentials that are in the apple seed to become these different things could end up becoming a chair or a table. So, and it's all dependent on what causes and conditions occur along the way to that apple seed. At each moment, what happens to that, to the, the path that apple seed is on? Each moment, it can go a different way. Each moment, it has the opportunity to go different ways. So the previous Sutra 412, right? the importance of the moment. Which way are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going to end up? You end up, end up as a piece of furniture or as an apple pie uh, or just peacefully enjoying being outside in nature as an apple tree? Uh, where, where's it going to go? Uh, so the value of the moment and seizing the opportunities and being conscious of those opportunities and the cause and effect of what the opportunities might potentially offer us or, or signify. And all these things, all these different causes and conditions and all the different potentials, they are all tied into um, the influences of the gunas. Te vyakta sukshma gunatmanaha. It's the theoretical section. That, but it's a theoretical section that has tangible implications because we're trying to cultivate ourselves, right? That's what we call it sadhana, spiritual practice, yoga practice is called sadhana because you're intentionally using the tools of yoga, the tool of your attention to engineer yourself. So just like you have your to-do list and your chores at home and you can do it in a casual kind of scattered mind fashion. And maybe you get some of them done. Maybe you get uh, a few of them done, or maybe you get all of them done eventually. And who knows what happens in between Or you can do it more directly and utilize, use your time and energy more efficiently or less efficiently. So all these things will change the outcome of where, where you end up. There's a story of a, of a Tibetan Buddhist. He, he, he uh, went to a cave to cultivate. And uh, he cultivated there for, for many years. He, uh, he was so careful with his time and energy there was a, a briar bush, like a, one of those bushes with the thorns, briar bush in front of the entrance to the cave. And before, he, as he went into the cave, that thought occurs like, well, maybe you should trim back this bush so you can get into the cave more easily. But it's always like, no, I don't know, like how much time I have. I need to go get into the cave and, and do my sadhana. I don't want to use my time. I don't want to spend my time on this bush, manicuring, doing aesthetic work, 
I want to spend my time cultivating. And the same thing, every time he went in and out of the cave, he was always like, no, my time's too precious. I'm going to only use my time to cultivate. And there was another guy. Uh, he, he didn't sleep. He was always reciting uh, the Buddha's name. And his teacher questioned him and cautioned him about not sleeping. He said, don't you think you, you, you should take a little break? You should rest. Don't you think you need some sleep? Like, aren't you worried maybe you're going to get sick from not sleeping? <laughs> you, like, you, it's already been a few years. You're not sleeping. You're just practicing, 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 practicing. And he said, yeah, you're right. Probably you're right. But, but uh, time is too, too important. I don't want to use my time sleeping. So he was, he was famous. I don't know their names. I don't know the, the specifics, but uh, some people, you know, they're very, they're very inspired by their goal. And because of the amount of passion they have towards their goal, the, the amount of conviction they have towards their goal, that their goal is important to them. It's deeply uh, in seated in their heart to pursue that goal, they, all their time and energy is always directed towards that goal. Most of us, we don't have that extreme of uh, passion towards something, right? We're willing or we're interested in, in other things aside from just one single goal. Uh, But there's still the opportunity to be conscious about it versus the person whose mind is just um, not so stable, right? And then the efficiency in their activities is not quite as tight, tight as it need, should be yet. And that's okay. That's, that's, that's the growth process for the mind to become more and more stable, more and more stable. So it can then qualify itself for uh, bigger, better adventures. Right? You wouldn't want somebody who's super scattered as your partner climbing Mount Everest, would you? <laughs> you probably want somebody who's more stable. Right? Not going to space out. Somebody you can depend on. He's going to help be there for you. If something goes wrong, you don't want somebody who's always oh, daydreaming. A question. Yeah. Uh, the diagram, the uh -huh. going back to Thomas is a sad part for me. <laughs> Like you cultivate being a sattvic, yeah, and you fall to the tamasic again. I know it's such a bummer. Yeah, yeah. so I, I wish there was like some magic formula for it. So uh, how can the magic you... formula is is, <laughs> is is this one over on the the oh. transcendent? You have to you have to slowly 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 kind of. Break yourself away. That's why. That's why. Patanjali calls it kaivalya. Kaivalya means alone. Because until you create that aloneness, there's always there's always a stickiness that pulls your mind and it's su the suffering that you get pulled into with the experiences. Mm -hmm. So we we have to break the break away our identity, what we're identified with. So you're not actually, it's not that you're actually alone. It's that your identity has become stable. When your attention becomes stable, then there's an opportunity for your identity to become stable and to not get lost in the activities and the dramas of, of life.
Yeah, but that's the thing. In in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna teaches us the pros and cons of each of the gunas. And and what you just described is the con side of the sattva. Right? We want more sattva because that helps us stay out of trouble and it helps us generate more good blessings that will will help us be more prosperous and more successful towards our goals and the things that are valuable to us in life. We need that sattva energy. But uh but the downside the the uh, danger side of it is the attachment because everybody likes it when it's pleasurable but the gunas are going to cycle around so until you separate your identity right so you take the good and you don't get elated when it's good the one of the definitions of yoga the first definition that comes in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, the verse in the second chapter, verse 48, is not just having the stability of your attention, but that you're able to maintain the stability of your attention in the midst of success and failure. That is yoga. So when there's success, you don't get elated, which is a kind of like, it's an attachment, the elation. I mean, it doesn't mean you can't express emotions, but but you got to be careful, right? Because the emotion will carry you away, and then and then you have when it cycles around to tamas again, then you have the suffering because you allowed yourself to lose your identity in the joy of this of the success. We all know not, you know, that we want to not be attached uh, when things go not well. <laughs> That's obvious, but it's not so obvious. Like that, the same applies when things go well, because then that just that just strengthens the si- your your stuckness in the cycle. Okay. So we'll stop here today. We'll pick up with Sutra 414, unless I get flooded with uh, other more ideas about what we talked talked about today. Uh, and you want to recite the the 21 sutras one more time. Can we do it? We can do it just the uh, traditional way. Just the second black line with all the Sunday go through one, one time through like we did at the beginning. It's good. So the black line, the sun, where, where all the words are joined together, the, all the sounds be, as the words join together, that's the traditional way uh, somebody who's uh adept with chanting Sanskrit would chant it. Breaking it apart is more for teaching, either for teaching the meaning or for teaching pronunciation and, and to get the, the sutra, the rhythm of the sutra, the cadence of the sutra. So separate separation of the words is a teaching method. Joining together of the words is a chanting method. So we're going to do the second line, the chanting method way, where all the words are joined together. Atta kaivaya padaha janmao shaddi mantra tapas samadhi ja siddhayaha jatyantara parinama prakritya purat namittam aprayojakam Prakriti nam varana bedas tu tatakshe trikavat nirmana chittan yasmita matrat pravritti bede prayojakam chittamekamane kesham 
तत्रज्ञानजमनाशय काड़मा शुक्ला कृष्ण योगिनस्त्रिधमितुगुणाभ्यक्तिर्वासना जातिदेशवहिताप्यानता स्मृति संस्कारोरेकूपाशिशो निपलाश्रयालंबना संगृहतवादेशा अतीतानागतस्तभेदाधर्माणक्तूक्ष्मुणात्न वस्तुसाचिभेदाभक्त न चायकचित्तंत्र चेवस्तुतर प्रमाणक सदा किरुपरागापेक्षिवा वस्तु ज्ञाता सदा ज्ञातावृत्तस्तत्भो पुरुषस्याणीवास दृश्यवाकोभयानवधारण चितादृश्य बुद्ध बुद्धेरति प्रसंग स्मृति संघरश्चर्णमद पूर्णमीद पूर्णा पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्ण से पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवशिष्य शांति 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 ओ तत्सत ओ स्वस्ति प्रजाव्य पिपालयन मगेण मही महिषा गो ब्राह्मणेभ्य शुभमस्तु नि लोका समस्ता सुखी नो काले वर्षतु प्रजन्य पृथ्वी सालनी देशो योभ्रीता ब्राह्मण सन्तु निर्भिया अपुत्र पुत्रिन सन्तु पुत्रिन सन्तु कौत्रिण अदना सदना सन्तु जीवन शरदा शत स्वस्तिर्भवत शातिर्भवत पूर्ण मंगल सर्वे सुखिन सर्वे सन्त निरामया सर्वे भद्रा पश्यंत मा कचि दुखभावे ओ शाति 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 ओ असतो मकमया तमसो मोतिर्गमया मृत्योर्मा अमृतंगमया ओ शाति 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 ओ पूर्णमद पूर्णमीद पूर्णा पूर्णमुदच्य पूर्ण 
ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ತತ್ಸತ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾರ್ಪಣಮಸ್ತು Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, see you next time.